In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look specifically at what a rate is and how it's different from a ratio. And so at the top here, we can see that all that a rate is, is it's a special ratio that compares two quantities, and here's the key part, that are measured in different units. And if you think about it, you actually already know some examples of rates in uh, sort of everyday life. Uh, a perfect example is you know of a heart rate. And if you think about it, what a heart rate does is a heart rate compares beats and it compares the number of beats per minute. So we're comparing beats to minutes. Uh, another example is that you know of a, let's say, a driving rate or a running rate or, or some sort of rate like that that compares distance to minutes or to hours or, or whatever, some unit of time. And you also know of exchange rates, and exchange rates just compare the currency in, in from one country, let's say U.S. dollars, and compares it to another country, let's say Singapore dollars. So these are three different examples of rates. So uh, let's actually just practice writing rate. So let's say, uh, I'll say Mr. Ray rides 12 kilometers to school in 30 minutes. So just based on this information we can actually write a rate and so the rate that we will write this time is I'm gonna write a rate that compares kilometers to minutes and so my rate is gonna be 12 kilometers compared to 30 minutes. 12 kilometers to 30 minutes. Now if you think about that actually, that's not really the most useful of rates for us um, because usually we don't think of speed in terms of 30 minute increments. Usually we think of speed in terms of, in terms of hours. So based on this, I'm actually going to write an equivalent rate and in this time I'm going to change that 30 minutes into one hour or if you remember one hour is 60 minutes. And so to do that, it, it's kind of like solving a basic proportion, but to do that, I need to upscale, in this case, both my time and my distance. So 30 minutes, to change that into one hour, well, that's really times two. And likewise, I'll do the same to the top, times by two. So my actual rate is 24 kilometers in one hour or 24 kilometers in 60 minutes. Both of these are rates. This is a rate and this is a rate. They happen to be equal because we basically have used the property of equality and what we did to the bottom multiplied it by 2. We also did it to the top and multiplied it by 2. A unit rate is just a special type of rate where in this case what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that we have a denominator of one. That's where the word unit comes in, right? It's, it's per one. And the reason why we sometimes use unit rates is it's useful for comparing different rates. And so we'll use a couple of examples to kind of see how this works. So let's use, uh, let's use currency or money as our first example. So let's say that um, you have uh, 40 US dollars and a friend offers to give you 52 Singapore dollars for that uh, for that forty dollars and you want to know if that's a fair uh, if that's a fair deal so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a rate and, and I always like to start with words here so I'm gonna create my rate in terms of Singapore dollars compared to US dollars and so using the information up here I have 52 Singapore dollars is equal or compared to 40 US dollars. Now all that a unit rate does is it's an equivalent rate that has a denominator of one. So I'm going to find out how many Singapore dollars is equal to one US dollar. And to do that I'm just going to focus on once again that property of equality idea that to change 40 into one I need to divide that by 40 and so I'm going to do the same thing to the top part of my ratio. I'm going to divide that by 40. And so 52 divided by 40 is 
three zero Singapore dollars. So now I get a unit rate that 1.30 Singapore dollars is equal to or equivalent to one US dollar. So there's my unit rate that I built from the rate. Another place where we commonly see unit rates, or in this case I'll call it a unit cost, is, uh, is, is when shopping. And in particular in grocery stores, you see this all the time displayed on the price of items. And the unit cost is the cost of one particular unit of whatever that item is. So for example, I just purchased a can of Diet Coke. And that Coke cost me $1.30 for 330 milliliters. And so my, so my rate for this is a comparison of the cost per volume. So in this case, it cost me $1.30 for 330 milliliters. Now unit cost says, well, how much did that drink cost for one milliliter? And, and I know you're not gonna buy one milliliter, but this is a way that we can compare costs later on. And so in this case, to change 330 into one, I need to divide by 330, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the top. And I'm gonna get something really, really small here. Okay. Divide by 330. And when I do that, I actually get a really small number. I get 0 0.0039, and that 3.9 is repeating. So the cost of one milliliter of that beverage is 0 0.0039 dollars, or it's 0.39 repeating cents, probably 0.4 cents. So that's the unit cost of, of that particular drink. Now, Sometimes we might use what's called a reciprocal rate. And all that a reciprocal rate is, is just like when we think back to fractions, it's just writing the rate the other way around. So in the case of the money, maybe I don't want to know how many Singapore dollars are in one US dollar. I want to know how many US dollars are in one Singapore dollar. So in this case, I'm just going to flip everything around. 40 US dollars compared to 52 Singapore dollars and I want to know now how much the value of one Singapore dollar so this time instead of dividing both sides by 40 I'm going to divide both sides by 52 52 over here and divide by 52 over here and when I do that I get 0 0.79 US dollars so approximately 79 cents US is equal to one Singapore dollar. Once again, these are just reciprocals. They're just, they're just the same rate, but written in two different ways. And depending upon what you're trying to find, you might want to use the rate at the top, or you might want to use the rate at the bottom. The same can be done when you're looking at, uh, at unit costs. Maybe instead of finding the cost per milliliter, I want to find out how many milliliters I get for one dollar. So I start with the same thing again, 330 milliliters costs me $1.30, but this time I want to find out what I'm going to get for $1. And so same thing, I'm going to divide both sides by, or both halves of my ratio by 1.3 and divide by 1.3. And when I do that, I get 253.8 253.8 milliliters. So this is telling me that for one dollar I can get 253.8 milliliters of um, this particular drink.